Rossi, maybe just the start of the injury is the easiest one. Um, Cheslin, what's the situation with him? Could he Billy, those type of things? Yeah, uh, Billy's cleared, Cheslin's cleared. Uh, it will, we'll have to manage this week. Uh, Marcus Zola will have to manage this week. Uh, but both stand a chance to, to, to be available against Ireland. Fof, uh, we have to manage this week. Uh, and then obviously the only other guy that won't be available who's training is Jasper uh, out of the whole group, so it's those three. Um, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, before this test series. Uh, the Irish have reacted to some of the comments that people like Damon did in the interviews. And, um, Simon Zebo said, you hate the Irish um, in the podcast. Um, do you expect there to be a bit of an eagle in this, this game, given the history between the two sides? Uh, well, if, if there's one team that's uh, certainly got the upper hand, it's, it just shows on paper that since 2016, uh, I never want to make us the underdogs, and we don't, we don't want to be the underdogs, but I mean, uh, the stats is there, we haven't beaten them since 2016. Uh, then just on the Simon Zebo thing, I mean, he messaged me, uh, people who know Simon Zebo would know he's, he's, a, he's, a joke, he's a joker, you know. He, Every every chance he gets, he makes a joke or a little crack here and there. And I immediately uh, messaged me and says, "Listen, yeah, that came out totally wrong. They they totally didn't understand what I was trying to say." Uh, he apologized and said, "Must he go back on air and rectify it?" I said, "No, man. Uh, it spice it up. Uh, let's keep it that way." Uh, coach, um, Lewis Ferguson is going to be Hmm. Uh, no, it's, it's it's not something big for us, you know. Uh, uh, the scrum, I think there was two free kicks. Uh, I think we had one against us. Um, so, you know, you just have to decide: Are you going to slow that free kick down and, and kick it up and under, or if it's inside your 22, are you going to kick it out, or are you actually going to quick tap, or when it's close to the goal line, are you actually now going to do a a set move, uh, the old school moves, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the point r rule where the forwards must stand still, uh, we've never actually done that where we advanced. It was only France that really did that, so that's not a big change. Um, then, what's, what's the other one? Um, that's a big change. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, the other one uh, is... is, is uh, the shot clock is now uh, up in line, I'd say, pushing you, uh, uh, you know, at scrum time, they're making sure that you're quicker in there. Uh, but all of that, you know, suits us. Uh, uh, we, we still got a lot of scrums, we still got a lot of penalties, line out is still important. Um, yeah, so um, we can't really moan about any of the laws. Um, we understand uh, there was a few instances on, I wouldn't say foul play, uh, I mean, uh, what's his name, Canons was bad luck, but definitely a little bit reckless, you know. You can't just put your foot out there and, and hope he doesn't hit somebody's head. Uh, uh, I think Bongi uh, definitely also uh, um, was lucky not to get a yellow card for when he went in there, uh, when he made the tackle there. Um, and then overall, I think we conceded th 13 penalties and, and paper, Jakub Paper took it through all of us, all the penalties this morning. and, and there was definitely seven or eight that's avoidable, that uh, wasn't accidents, that's stu stupidity from our side. So uh, all in all, we're happy with the laws. So having played those new laws, you, you feel confident next week that you're going to have it under control, especially with the upper paper coming in and helping us? Yeah, yeah, he sits one-on-ones one on one with the players, with, uh, with the captain who was uh, uh, Peter Steff there. Uh, with uh, Jesse who was vice captain, and then you know with the wingers to talk to the touch judges uh, or the ARs, the Edwell on the one side, and then uh, you know, other wing on the other side, um, uh, the props, uh, how to communicate those kind of things. So we've since the World Cup started, we we've just changed our mind around. Uh, even though we're right, you know that doesn't mean uh, you can be disrespectful towards the uh, referees and and ARs and everybody, and I think that helped a lot. And having paper in here now, we even more understand under how much pressure a referee is. We actually, he actually told us the other day they make, they make 950 decisions during a game, or non-decisions, you know, not to make a decision. So uh, to make maybe 20 f uh, mistakes in a game is not that bad. It's maybe still a, a A. 
um, what else you got up for me? Um, what are the lens of crypto up in this election? And it caused quite, quite the favor of debate. Was that of the end of this? Um, just talk us through why, how, how, what, what ways matches that going in this one. Uh, yeah, you see, we as SA Rugby, or when we are the director of SA Rugby, we have no control over what the franchises do, where they play players. We have a pony system, which is players of national interest, which, which we contribute money money to. Uh, when a player plays SA schools and he goes to a province and he's in the under-20 setup, uh, if he's good enough, he makes our, hopefully the previous year, our SA schools team and then our junior Springboks team, and he goes into the academy. Uh, and, and then, you know, we even for, for a young guy, we give a pony contribution, sometimes just 100,000 or 60,000 or 150,000. And then you get the big rollers, the guys who win World Cups, who starts for you, like uh, who's playing in South Africa, that we contribute uh, a few million towards their salary. So Jan Hendrik Wessels was one that we earmarked through our EPD system since 2013 when we started. And he was always a loose head. He always play, also played locked. Uh, he actually played loose head with uh, Andre Gouventer uh, at uh, at Gray. Uh, I think they're a year apart, but they they yeah, they play, they, they yeah they back next to one another. So uh, you know we had Joseph Dweba now in the system for four weeks, uh, four test weeks. He was involved, uh, uh, and and prior to the World Cup, he was involved in, in, in alignment camps and, and normal camps. We now had um, Andre Gouventer involved on a tour, on a match day, on a warm-up, on an alignment camp, on a training week and in match week and travelling. So we now know how, how that is. He's got that experience. Um, Grobis is obviously one of the standout hookers. I don't think anybody can argue that, that uh, the Bulls went the deepest in the competition and their line was definitely good. I don't know if it's Andres or... Uh, um, maybe the liner caller, but uh, Robbie has definitely improved a hell of a lot and, and is a straightforward third choice at this stage for us. But then the nice thing now about Dan Hendrik is he's covering for you one and two, which makes the selection if we go to 2027. It's not to say that Andre Gouventer can't grab that number two jersey. It's not to say that Bongi is definitely still going to make the next World Cup. Uh, it's not to say that Malcolm's knee won't back up again. So what we're trying to do is expose guys to our, our Springbok environment as, as much as possible. Now, if you think about it, it's actually just two weeks that Jan Hendrik Wessels is with us and uh, uh, will be with us. And then maybe he might play against Portugal. Now, uh, Andre Gouventer was with us two weeks. Uh, um, and uh, Nietling Fushia was with us two weeks. Uh, uh, Tux was with us two weeks. Uh, when we go to Durban, we're just going to pull him in. Uh, sometimes during this week here, we might just draft a player like Kian Horn in and, and come and train with us here. So, of course, they, they're local. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of, lot of money. So, the group is 39, but the group is actually 46. Uh, because we are preparing not just for Ireland, we are also preparing for Portugal. In total, 54 or 55 mm. players um, in, in uh, the squad yesterday in the standby squad. Yeah. And yet, still on social media, there's some discussions about who didn't make it, who was yeah. unlucky. Is this probably the healthiest that Springbok Rugby has been in terms of, of depth since you've been around? Yeah, well, I must say, um, I'll, I love it when the people. Um, get into it and, and, and have their opinions, you know, it shows that they watch rugby and they, they follow rugby and they, 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 know the, they, they know the game and sometimes they make you think. Uh, of course, when you look at th th uh, four hookers, it looks stupid, but he's not just a hooker, he's a loose head also, and they're going to use him at loose head and as hooker, you know, and, and that unfortunately for a guy like Tux uh, and Tutuku, who played for us and he played really well, uh, um, he's going to miss this week and next week, but then the week when we play in Durban, he's going to train again with us there, not to say he's going to play in a test match, and then the next week it's a Portugal test match. So uh, I, I fully understand if people who's not part of our setup, uh, it looks sometimes things look a little bit weird. Again, it looks like four scrum offs, but Faf does have a niggle, so we actually have three scrum offs there uh, just to cover Faf. Um, you know, uh, 
there's guys that we've put time and effort into our EPD systems, uh, not just financially, but uh, IP-wise during the under-20s by Pafana and by Lui Kunda, performance manager. A guy like Sasha went on the SAA side tour with us last year just to get used to how we do things, uh, how we operate, uh, how we pick our team, how we have a half-time talk, how we uh, you know, just handle ourselves in public. And that experience for him uh, was just wonderful. When he won, went on on Saturday, you could clearly see that the guy like um, uh, Jordan, uh, he, Jordan was doing so many great things, but then he would just slip when he ran through a gap. Kicked one ball, unfortunately, out in the full, missed one kick for poles. Uh, but overall, he had a hell of a good defensive game. Uh, but then Sasha, who was in our system, uh, was used to us. He just, he just settled in. So sometimes I can understand that people are upset about Elrich, uh, you know, uh, people is on Luke, uh, Sia Masuku, uh, there's a lot, Ruben, Wilco, uh, but all of these boys, hopefully, hopefully if things goes well against Ireland, can maybe play against uh, Portugal. Rossi, <coughs> uh, yeah, Rossi. Um, you, you've made mention of Wilco and Wilco's been on your radio, Wilco, no? on your radio, radio for some time. Mm. Does he remain there? Yeah, he's on the standby list. Uh, uh, you see, uh, the thing here is you've got Franz Malherbe and Vincent Koch uh, who, who, who've delivered consistently. Uh, um, and then you've got Trevor Niakane who played in the World Cup final when Vincent was out and who's back here. We, we'll look at Vin uh, Trevor now. It's not to say that Trevor can't, or any of these players can't fall out of the system if, if we pick up that some of them are not fit enough. I'm not talking about Trevor specifically, but some of the French players and the, some of the guys who came from Ireland and some of the guys who come from a premiership. You know, uh, this is a group. Uh, the 23 has not been picked yet. So we can always swap somebody if, if somebody has a niggle or he doesn't really do well. Uh, that's why I do... I didn't answer your previous question. I do think our, our depth is healthy. Uh, um, last year we had one fly-off, you know, at the World Cup final. Now there's five guys that we probably can, can put there. So um, yes, Wilco, Wilco's in the mix. He's, he's, he's on our radar. Um, Rossi, just a question around um, the fact that there's so much depth now in the Springbok camp. Um, does that create a good sense of competitive, uh, competitive health within the team? Yeah, our, yeah, our motto is, uh, uh, you know, we fly in a V formation and, and we rotate. It's not always the same bird who flies in, in front, you know. Uh, he, he gets all the drag, so it's not always see how he flies in front. Sometimes it's people stiff. Sometimes you must just uh, fall in the back and honk and, and encourage. Uh, and sometimes you have to lead. Uh, so uh, if a player, you know, steps out of that V formation, he feels the drag. Uh, and if he doesn't fall back into line and understand what we're trying to do is uh, normally we have a chat to him, uh, explain it to him, give him a chance to think about it, uh, um, rectify his, his attitude and make sure it's healthy competition. Uh, we don't want him to give up his position, we want him to fight for his position. Uh, so it's, 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 I would say it's healthy competition and those guys who doesn't see it as healthy competition, we, 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 we just work out. Uh, you know, we give them a chance, we explain it to them, uh, and if they see hot all the time, unfortunately, then, you know, there's no place for that in the Supreme Rusty, talking about um, players and launching about players, uh, there's been a lot of talk about some overseas-based players, and we've seen the success of Andre Estes and Jasper Vista, and now Thomas Satori has got the Premiership and, and plays for their best rugby. How difficult is to monitor players, um, some of the names that are coming up, have been like Tyron Green, Renard Jansen from Rensburg, John Augustus. How difficult is it to try and track all the various different sort of players around the world? And sort of what's your measure of those players who are overseas and not maybe on our streets every single weekend but remain available? Uh, we measure uh, 98 players, uh, uh, and we have a we call it a roadmap on each player. So uh, uh, Augustus was 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 measured, um, uh, but he's competing with Evan Ruiz, Quaja Smith, uh, Jasper Visser, and then you can still move uh, Jean-Luc Dupriere there. Uh, um, you know, and there were some games in the latter stages which, which he didn't even start. 
um, uh, it's difficult. It's it's in the Japanese players. They play a fast running game. Their numbers is high on the on the GPS stats and, and, and so on. But yes, we it's difficult to track. But once we are we, here, where we now, and we've got all the players with us here, it starts calming down. You know, because Andre was with us, but he can't play. Jasper is still with us, and he still can't play. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, the Bulls players uh, weren't available, but now they can train and they must learn a few things very, very quickly uh, because they missed two weeks of training. And the week before that, the Stormers missed a week of training before they fell out. And it almost looked like the Lions also went through uh, at one stage. So it was really a juggling act. Uh, but now it's all settled. We know who's injured. We know a guy like Kane and Moody will be read, ready for the Irish uh, second test. Um, you know, uh, there's not a lot of guys. Uh, Mchunu, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Stephen Kitchoff, John Klein, Leroy, Cameron, Jordan, Henku, and Damien will be out for the Irish series. But Kanan uh, might, might, might play that second game. Um, Rusty, you mentioned road maps and growing with players to EPT systems. Mm. How do you then juggle? rewarding that persistence and then also rewarding current form? Yeah, current form is also, um, uh, I don't want to sound wise or, or say I know uh, all the answers. I'm just saying current form is uh, when you play against a team uh, and you play brilliant, you must also take into account who is that team that you are playing against. So teams that play in the European Cup, play against much better opposition than uh, teams that play in a challenge cup. It's just a fact. You, know? you must just, people must just understand that. It's that it's two, the level of those two competitions are, 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 are massive. So for a team to win the challenge cup is fantastic for the Sharks. I mean, because they, they, they struggled in the URC. And it actually shows for a team that, that lost seven games on a trot or eight, and then we go and win the challenge cup, it just shows you how far the URC is behind the, the, the European Cup, if we can call it that way. So uh, the small things we track is, is your work rate, is your tackle efficiency, is your clean-out technique, you know, is your passing skills. Uh, uh, people look at stats that's, that's easy, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but they look at stats as how many kicks are over, uh, you know, how many tries were scored, how many meters were made. Uh, but that is stats that's the result of other hard work, of fundamentals, of cleaning out the breakdown, of scrumming well, of knowing your calls as a fly-off. And talking about the EPD system, guys who's, who's gone through that, uh, and, and I guess you're referring like a guy like Sia Masuku, I guess that's what you're referring to. Uh, um, Jordan is one of the players who didn't always was fully in the EPD system, and you could just see him struggle but he was part of the EP system at stages. But you could see Sasha just slotting in because the under-20s had the same game plan. Uh, so Sia um, is definitely not too old. He's 27, 28. You know, when the World Cup's there, he's 32. Uh, that's uh, 26 or 38 in the World Cup, you know, so you can play another two. Um, uh, but uh, we must give him more time to settle, more time to get used to the Springbok way of doing things uh, again. When we're in Durban, we'll get him into the mix there, having trained train with us and, and hopefully throw a few flyers there into the Portugal Test match. Last English question over there, and then I'll move on to Coach, just quickly on uh, Sia Khaleesi. Uh, a few weeks ago, his club owner had some very critical words about him. Now that you, he's back in the system and you've seen him and you've assessed him, where is he in his fitness? Is he going to be good to go against Ivan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sia will be captain and Sia will play six flank and Sia's fit and Sia's got no injury and Sia's not fat and Sia's not transparent. <laughs> <laughs>